Rev up your engine! Now today I got a very special car, a 95 Toyota Supra Turbo. If you know a little history of these cars, these are the bee's knees. These are the Supras that the collectors want. Now when they first put the Supra with the six cylinder engine in it, it put out a whopping 110 horsepower with the straight six engine. And that was back in 1979. Now this is a 1995, the stock ones with bi turbos put out 340 horsepower. They had a lot of horsepower for a little car like this. Now this one's been modified a little as you can see. It's got a carbon fiber hood. It's still got the straight six engine, but it's got a blueprinted 3.4 liter engine. It doesn't have two turbos. It only has one. You can see it's a rather large turbo. It's all heat wrapped for efficiencies. The guys that did this thing in Florida, they knew what they were doing. Because on a dyno, this thing puts out 1,250 horsepower. We're not talking about at the flywheel. We're talking about the drive wheels. 1,250 horsepower. But showing how well Toyota makes stuff, this still has the V160 gear track transmission that the original one came from. That only had 340 horsepower and it hasn't broken yet with 1250 horsepower on it. You want to talk about overbuilding? Toyota is known for that. Now, you might say, okay, well, they stopped making them. Oh, there's something wrong. There's nothing wrong with the cars. The problem was they weren't selling enough of them at the price point that they had. As anyone who knows about Toyota history, the owner, he was into racing. Racing doesn't make money. Selling cars makes money. And they didn't sell enough of them, so they stopped making them. And now, sadly, they came back with the Supra. But it has nothing to do with this car at all. It's a BMW Roadster because Toyota did not want to spend the money to research and design and build one. And I guess they figured, well, what the heck? BMW makes straight six engines, so we'll have them make a sports car for us. Just like the little bitty Toyota sports car, the one that's really a Subaru. It's made in a Subaru factory by Subaru. It's not really a Toyota sports car at all, but Toyota didn't do it and do research and development. They thought, oh heck, they already have that out there. They're cute looking, we'll put our badge on it. I'm against that stuff myself, but Toyota don't want to spend the money. They're making a fortune selling Corollas, Camrys, and their Lexus lines. They want to make money they're not going to be making their own sports cars it costs too much money you never recoup the investment now this particular supra is a love of labor for the customer and he'll never recoup his investment either because he's putting so much money into it but it's his baby he's really into it he's retired military he can do what he wants although his wife might disagree he's been married to her over 40 years <laughs> kind of like mine you know <laughs> they rule the roost ultimately but they let us have toys every once in a while now you don't have to modify it to 1250 horsepowers to have fun but of course if you do you're gonna have a lot more fun <laughs> And spend a lot more money. 100K here, there, a little bit more. <laughs> it's not cheap to do it right. And this engine was done right by these dudes in Florida. Induction performance. But there's a story behind this great 3.4 engine that was put in it. He had gone to another place, I believe it was in Georgia, and they said they were putting the 3.0, build it all up. He gets it home. He drives it a little, it dies. He revs it up, makes it in his driveway. Thing doesn't work right. He ends up sending it to Florida, to these other guys who knew what they were doing. And they said, they lied to you. It had a 3.0, not a 3.4. It didn't have reworked head on it at all. It was just a stock head. They had lied to him. And there's a lot of dishonest people out there these days. If you're serious about it, you gotta do a lot of research, get some personal experience from guys who actually use them, see what they have. Most guys with a car like this are gonna wanna show it off. So if you're thinking thinking about doing stuff like this, go to a guy who's already done it, drive his, get his experience, then you can deal with the same people. So you don't have to make a mistake that he did that cost the money. You go to the good guys in the first place. People just think just because somebody says they can do something, it doesn't mean they can. Like we used to say in Texas, some people are all hat and no cattle. Now needless to say, wheels, tires, brakes are all upgraded. 
These are 18 inch CCW and check inside. Those stop ticks, brakes that are on there, man, those are gigantic calipers. If you have 1,250 horsepower pushing you down the road, you need brakes that can stop 1,250 horsepower. You gotta upgrade if you're gonna do something like that. No, it's a regular Supra. Body style. You can see it would have a lot of room if you put the seat down, but this baby's got 150 shot nitrous oxide set up on it. Getting 1,250 50 horsepower it's not an easy thing to do <laughs> To me, it's an amazing thing that this little bitty straight six engine can put out 1,250 horsepower and still hold itself together. Now, I do have to say, the stock ones with 340 horsepower back in the day, that was a lot of horsepower for a little car like this, right? I got a friend who's on Long Island. He got one of these things back in the day for Mr. Toyota. They had a drinking contest, I guess. When they were loaded, he asked my friend, oh, hey, what car would you have? He said, I'd like a bi-turbo Supra. Why don't you buy one? He says, they cost too much money. So Mr. Toyota said, would you buy it if you could get it at our cost for building? He said, sure. Well, this was done in a drunken stupor and nothing else was thought about it for a while. But one day he's sitting at his office on Long Island. He gets a phone call from the docks saying, hey, we don't know who you know, but there's this Toyota Supra waiting on the docks for you. So he got his bi-turbo dirt cheap. He still has it. And one time he got caught doing about 135 miles an hour out in the country. Uh, they should have put him in jail, but he talked his way out of just doing 90. So, even with only 340, they can go. This thing, it's total insanity. Well, you can hear this thing has a few horsepower just sitting here. And off we go. Now, as you can see, this vehicle can do insane things. Now, you don't have to go this far. You can have a lot of fun with one that has only 340 horsepower, but the very fact that it can do this with a six cylinder engine is rather amazing when you think about it. That's why I always like straight six cylinder engines. They're inherently balanced engines. So, if you have an inherently balanced engine, guess what? You can do insane things with it. If you have a slightly unbalanced engine, the faster it goes, the bigger the imbalance, and wham! That's why weak engines will blow up. You get an inherently strong design, if you keep pumping it up, it can take it because there's hardly any imbalance. And of course, this thing was perfectly balanced by the guys who built the engine engine in Florida. They knew what they were doing. You're gonna mess around with things like this? You wanna get that kind of horsepower? You need somebody who really knows what they're doing and isn't just all hat, no cattle, and talk the talk, but not walking the walk. These guys, they walk the walk to build something like this that can take. Truthfully, I am amazed that the six-speed transmission can take all that horsepower. Again, we have Toyota overbuilding. They build them so strong, something that was designed for a 340 by turbo can now take 1,250 horsepower. And even with all that power, strangely enough, he can go from Clarksville to Nashville and back about 120 miles where he's going. And if he fills it up here in Clarksville, he's still got a quarter of a tank left when he gets back for 120 miles. That's not bad for this kind of insane horsepower. I do have to say, when I was driving the 2013 Shelby Cobra, it only had 667 horsepower. And the way I drove it, I got about three miles a gallon. I had to fill that thing up three times and I only had it for six days. <laughs> and I didn't even take it out of town. <laughs> And yeah, you get better gas mods on the highway, but this kind of horsepower, it still can get decent gas mods if you're just going the speed limit a little bit further. It's a well-designed engine. And let's face it, for a 25-year-old car, look at it. It's unbelievably beautiful. It's pretty much a style that never goes out of style. They were perfectly balanced suspension-wise. They've got nice lines on them. Of course, this one's been modified, but it's modified on something that was pretty good to start out with. Although this one's gone a long way from the original 100 and 10 horsepower version more than 10 times <laughs> So now you see what can be done with a Toyota by turbo if you want to put a whole bunch of money into it or if you can find one that's still in decent shape that's stock. It's a collector's item too, especially if whoever bought it a previous time realized that it was a great car, didn't put a ton of mileage on it. They have really high resale value if you got an original equipment one. They didn't make that many in the first place. A lot of them got wrapped around trees. So if you can find old barn find somewhere or old man older than me who can't drive it anymore, might not be a bad idea to pick it up. 
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.